Sally, Las will, Vegas. You, will you turn that off? Don't you like ZZ Top? I do, but not this time in the morning. You'll wake up Faye. Sorry. Just thinking about your dad getting spliced in Vegas. I know, it's absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? No, I think it's wonderful. I mean, it's not as if he was a, a K-Line tourist wearing the first cocktail waitress to shake his pina colada. That would be ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, it would. Well, I suppose yeah. some people do get carried away and taken advantage of. Yeah, well, if you're daft enough to stand before God slash Elvis and say till death us do part to a total stranger, you deserve everything you get. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, you do. But Yasmin and Jeff, they're totally committed to each other. I think it's a lovely, spontaneous gesture, and I think we should take a leaf out of their book. Well, I'm not getting married in Vegas again. Hey? I mean, I'm not going to get married to you again because we're, we're already married, aren't we? Yeah, don't I know it. No, I'm talking about throwing a party for him tomorrow night, you know, for Yasmin and Jeff, and we can celebrate their nuptials properly. Well, I'm not sure as they'd want the fuss. Of course they will. We could do a Vegas theme. Got bright lights, cocktails, you could get an Elvis outfit. I, d I don't think it's their thing. Don't be so negative. They'd love it. Bring back some lovely memories for them. You reckon? Absolutely. I'm going to go around and tell them now. Make that tea for me. I won't be long. Oh. Hey. Oh, hi. Have you spoken with Daniel today? Uh, no. Why? I've just been in the corner shop. Evelyn was complaining. Apparently, Bertie's been crying all morning. Mm. Has he? Well, it seems so. I know Daniel wants us to back off, but it sounds like he's struggling. Over there, the office party. They've got some cheek, the amount of noise they've been making. Service! He's a nightmare. Do you think we should call Michelle? Somebody service! Definitely. Service! Rushed off your feet, I see. Hmm. It's been a whirlwind few weeks. I'm relaxing when I still can. Back to work tomorrow. Still got the energy for this party of Sally's, though. Oh, it'd be lovely to celebrate with family. I missed Alia at the wedding. Didn't realize it was so upsetting marrying me. No, no, it was wonderful. But this will be a chance to smooth things over with her. If she turns up. Oh, when we told her we got a wedding in Vegas, she had to face the length of the strip. She was just in shock. That's all. Anyway, I'm sure we'll all have a lovely time at Sally's. Yeah, maybe. But if we're going to celebrate our wedding, we should have the party here. I don't know. Sally's happy to... Well, it's I not don't... her place. We're the happy couple, so we should have a few people around. Just a few drinks. No daft Vegas theme. Hmm? What do you say? We could, but Grant. I don't... I... But we need to get weave in mind. Can't have people coming around with a house in this state. Looks tidy enough. There's a world of difference between tidy and clean. I don't want people thinking they're going to catch something if they put their volivant down. Well, in that case, I'll have to get busy. No time like the present. Come on, get your penny on. Oh. Come on. Yes. What did it say? You won't like this. Ace. Well, we tried to bother with his phone. He left us no choice. Daniel. And Daniel! Daniel, what's the matter? Yeah, yeah, I'll take him. What happened? I can't. I thought it was getting better, but I can't. I can't do it. I can't bear it. It's too much. We're here now. It's all right. No, it's not. It's not. It won't be all right. There's nothing. Nothing that I can do about it. I'm wasting my time trying. That's not true. Watch that video, you'll see. We can never make this better. Well, from what you've told me, I'm afraid your marriage is 100% genuine. We can't, because even the bloke that did it wasn't the real thing. What? He wasn't authorised to marry you? He was a Sammy Davis Jr. look-alike. Right, but was he a licensed efficient? I, I don't I think he said something along those lines, yeah. Well, then I wish I had better news for you. Your marriage to Sally, given the circumstances, is, of course, null and void. I had no idea that I was married. Well, ignorance is no defence. But there's got to be some way out. There's got to be some sort of loophole. Well, if the marriage wasn't consummated, that could be grounds for annulment. Right. So, 
Like, it all boils down to whether or not you and the Charlotte actually got around to... Oh, um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, no, I don't think so. You don't think so? How drunk were you? I'm drunk enough to let a Sammy Davis Jr. lookalike marry me off to an heiress that's had none for less than 24 hours. Uh, right, so what you need to do then is track her down and find out exactly what went on. Need sorting. Oh. Even if no one else does. You see? He made a mistake, one you sincerely regretted, and Sinead would not want you to torture yourself over. No, of course she wouldn't, because she was a much better human being than I could ever be. Daniel. No, you can't deny that. I thought that I could come to terms with what I did, but I was deluding myself. Sinead forgave you. Well, I'm not supposed to make it better, that she could be so strong when I was weak. But, of course, she never thought that about herself because of me. She never valued herself. You made her happy. Did you hear that video? Did she sound happy? She had terminal cancer. Yes, and all the while thinking that she was punching above her weight with me. Me! I made her feel like that. Tormenting yourself like that isn't going to change anything. Yes, and that's the worst bit, because there's nothing to do. I can't change it. There's no telling her that I was the lucky one. The wrong person died. I feel exactly the same about Deirdre. I don't want your pity. Why do you think Sinead had left those messages? For Bertie. Not that one. Why do you think she left that for you? So that I wouldn't feel bad. Exactly. She wanted her legacy to be a source of strength, not reproach. Granddad's right. She would not want you cooped up in here, watching those messages on loop. They're all that I've got. Then cherish them for what they were intended to be. A precious gift from a woman who loved you, not a reproach from the grave. Right, now, get yourself showered and get dressed. You need to go out and face the world, just like Sinead wanted, yeah? And it just gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling to be bringing families together, so I'm pounding the streets to spread a little good cheer. Well, you're certainly spreading something, and if I was driving down a country lane, I'd be winding up my windows. I only want to put a poster on your door. Do you know, my ex and his little lad, I think they'd love this. What do you get for your money? Reindeer. Elves, Santa himself, mince pies, mulled wine, stalls. Mm, what kind of stalls? Christmassy stalls, mm. to delight and enchant young and old alike. Well, I shan't be going. There's nothing delightful or enchanting about selling yuletide tat and a shaking Stevens on a loop. Mm, into Wonderland. Santa's en route from the North Pole as we speak. Mm. Last I heard, he'd stopped off at tea-based services to water the reindeer. <laughs> oh, is that a euphemism? A little bit of Lapland is coming to Weatherfield. Have you got kids? Uh, yeah, yeah, ten-year-old boy. Oh, well, if you want to see his little eyes light up... China torch in them. He'll probably enjoy that more, and you'll save yourself 20 quid. But what price a child's happiness, eh? And let's face it, a tenner a ticket is a mere fraction of what that bag cost. Oh, no, I wish. Between us, this is a knockoff. Is it? You'd never have guessed that. Yeah. Neither would I. Do you mind if I have a look? Yeah, if you well, I wouldn't take the chance. You get used to looking at fakes in the market. If this is a knockoff, it's the best I've seen. It's real leather, stitching's bang on. You got a serial number. There. IMHO. That's the genuine article. <laughs> no, it's not. They cost a fortune, these. My boyfriend bought it for me. Then hang on to him. He didn't get much change out of a grand. I beg you, but for a handbag? Well, people need their heads examined. Take it off the counter, it'll scorch it. Uh, it's not stolen, Evelyn. Oh, and how did Gary Windus afford that? His furniture shop's not pulling up any trees because Fiona told me about that, so either he got it off the back of a lorry or his one spot the ball without telling anybody. <laughs> Else, if you like. I, no, no, this is fine. At least we're close by in case there's a problem with that. Yeah, grand little match. Table for three? Uh, yes, please, love. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought it was a deal. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, 
I get you any drink? Yeah, just a jug of tap water, thanks. Actually, since I'm here, I will have a drink. Uh, Sauvignon Blanc, large glass, please. You know what? It's Christmas. Make that too. Right, where is he? He's in the back. We tried to stop him, but he sent the relief chef home. No, it's fine. I'll take him from here. Are you going to kick him out? <sighs> well, that's the plan, yeah. Although I don't really want to face him on my own. Far too many knives in that kitchen for my liking. I'm going to need some backup. I thought what happened in Vegas stayed in Vegas. Oh, well, the doctors and lawyers will tell you different. All right, all right, don't rub it in. <laughs> Not what the doctors would say. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you've basically got the same problem that Henry VIII had. Oh, well, he had six wives, I've got two. Well, he wanted his marriage to Catherine of Tarragon and all because you couldn't give him a male heir. I know all about it, been helping Amy with her history. Oh, well, did he get it annulled? Nah, Pope stepped in. He got round it, though. Well, now I need all the tips I can get. Was he straightforward? <laughs> Depends what you mean by straightforward. You see, he split from the Catholic Church, made himself head of the Church of England, was excommunicated by the Pope, and then he dissolved all the monasteries, therefore plunging the country four decades into political and religious turmoil. Well, you go, mate. Job side. I'll get out of this marriage somehow. Well, he still won't be married to Sally. Not in the eyes of the law. <sighs> well, I'll find a way of getting it in all, keep it quiet, and get her to marry me without her knowing. How does someone get married without knowing? He managed it. You're not even sure you can get it annulled. Not if you can't remember what happened on your wedding night. Charlotte, mate. She's my message, she'll remember. Yeah, I know. It's called PTSD. <laughs> so, do you know how to find her? So she used to fly to Manchester. I think she lives the Openshaw way. Oh, well, get your phone out. Let's do some detective work. I shouldn't bother if I were you. Gordon Ramsay's got the angry chef outside. I'm working. No, you're not. Not here. Now get out. It's my kitchen! Oh, is it? Well, I think you'll find that I've got a legal document signed by you to say otherwise. So get out. What, are you going to make me? Yeah, we are. You're finished here. Who's going to do the cooking, Ryan? Uh -huh. No, I didn't think so. So if you don't mind, I'm busy. Yeah, well, actually, we do mind. What, I'm meant to be scared? No offence, boys, but as tag teams go, you're not the most intimidating. <laughs> well, maybe not. But if you don't get out of here, we're going to throw you out of here. Oh, well, you can try. The woman you knocked up's out missing, right? So, in your shoes, I'd be out looking for her. Yeah, not blanching asparagus where you're not wanted. Well, maybe you know she's not coming back. What's that supposed to mean? Listen, why don't you just do the right things once in your life and walk out of here under your own steam while you still got a chance, eh? Tell you something. It'll take more than the combined might of the Chuckle Brothers to keep me away. Right, well, I'll call the police then. Call who you like. I built this business and I won't have you take it away from me. No one took it away from you, okay? You threw it away. You know, blokes like you, you think you can get away with anything, don't you? Well, not this time. Don't lecture me, Ali. Not after what you got away with. Ali! Oh, God. Swing for me again, I'll bury you! Get out. I said, get out! I'll be back. Talking about a poor man's army. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Ryan. Got some neck on him, Robert, aren't you? Oh no. Give people something to talk about. People around here love having something to talk about. What happened is in the past, all right? Sinead wouldn't want you to. Look, I really wish that people would stop telling me what my wife would have wanted. I know what she wanted. It didn't involve being let down on a deathbed. Yeah, but it's about not letting her down in the here and now, right? Fine. To the wonderful here and now. That's like looking for a needle in an ace, that this. Well, maybe she's changed her name, you know, got a nickname. Um, Lottie, maybe. Lottie. No, I remember Charlie. That's when it's Charlie. Charlie, some of the other trolley dullies, they killed her that. Right, right, we'll try that. Don't forget to add Manchester. Yeah, yeah, all right, OK. Any draw? Yes, there's a match, look. Yeah. She's in open show. There's a picture there, is that her? I don't know. What are you doing? I was drunk. Oh, not all the time. No, no, most of it was. Well, I don't know. I, I can't tell from looking at that, can I? Should I send her a message? Oh, if she's the wrong woman, you're gonna look right weirdo. 
Yeah, it might be best to explain face to face. Plus, you'll be out of idea better in the flesh, won't you? Says there she works in a bar in the northern quarter. I can't just turn up out of blue. Well, me and Kev will come with you, won't we, Kev? Oh. Won't miss it for the world. <sighs> I swear you can hear a kettle being filled two blocks away. You want decaf? Is this fake or not? And be careful how you answer, because the bloke in the nose just told me that it's not. I want to get you something nice. Do you know how much these go for? Well, of course you do. You bought one. 895 quid, Gary. Why did you lie to me? Because it's stolen? No, it's not stolen. Look, I told you it was knockoff because I didn't want you to think I was coming on too strong, OK? I didn't want to scare you off. Well, nothing scares me more than lies. I've been down that road too many times. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but there's lies and there's lies. I mean, I could have told you it was real and it turned out to be fake. It's not funny. I want the truth. How can you afford it? And not just this. I mean, the car, the fancy new flat you want us to move into, the way you've been splashing out in the Rovers. Where is it all coming from? Well, thanks for tagging along, lad. Well, I've been standing on the hard shoulder of the M60 with a pair of jump leads and my life in my hands. Hardly. A little bit of wacky feet on the way out. <laughs> Yeah. Huh. If you were so you don't mean like. Yeah, like uh sorry I missed the last 14 anniversary. <laughs> I'm hoping when she sees me, conversation will take care of itself. Well actually, she might recognise you. Why do I look old? No, but you've changed. Well, let's put it this way. She liked running her fingers through you, yeah? she'd be a shock, isn't she? The only <laughs> thing she liked running her fingers through is me wallet in the minibar. Well, she robbed you. Well, no, she didn't exactly rob me, but let's say she likes spending me money. Couldn't afford a taxi from the airport home when I got there. You're doing it so well. Yes. Excuse me. Chance are over there, love. Follow the smell. Do you not recognise me? Should I? Can't you remember the drinking games at Caesar's Palace? The Little Church of the West? The Sammy Davis Jr. look-alike bit? Made his man and wife. <laughs> look, pal. I don't know we've been smoking, but nothing to do with me. Well, well, well. Hello, Timbo. <laughs> Timbo. <laughs> Charlie. Long time no see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Babe, where's the wine? No, 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 no. I've had enough to drink, OK? So it would solve anything. Oh. And who could argue with the grizzled voice of wisdom? <laughs> Sailed the seven seas, seen it all, done it all. Got a wardrobe full of T-shirts to prove it, if only. Look, you'll be doing this for me soon enough. Yeah, me too, probably. Well, on that cheery note, I think I need to pay a visit. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'll order some coffees. I'll make yours black. Thanks for doing this. I told you it'd be hard work. Could be worse under the circumstances, I suppose. Okay, Daniel. Daniel, can you hear me? Oh God, thank God he's alive. Listen, stay with me, okay? Stay with me. I'm sorry. Are you okay? Are you hurt? I'm so sorry. Everything's gonna be all right, okay? Do you hear me? I love you. I'll always love you. I'll uh, I'll go and phone an ambulance. My phone's in the car. Hey. Okay. Hey. No, I don't need one. No, Daniel, you might have hit your head. You need to go and get checked over, OK? No, I'm OK. 
Daniel, listen, you ought to get somebody to look at you. Why don't we pop over to the medical no, centre? No, I said no. Oh. Daniel, listen. wait. Now, listen to me. You might have concussion or anything, but please... Yeah, no, it's fine, OK? I'll sort it. It's, it's not your fault. How are you affording it? Look, we just sit down, please? Please? OK, firstly, Derek's throwing a lot of money at that factory. I've got the project management gig in Ancos, and this place is a little gold mine. You'd be surprised. Well, yeah, I would actually, because Fizz has been telling Evelyn that this place is struggling. Has she not? Yeah. Well, organ grinders don't tell the monkeys everything, you know that. What does that mean? It means that Fizz doesn't know about every little deal I make, does she? You know, I buy stock and I move it on quickly. Half of it doesn't even come through that door. I got hold of another English chair the other day, found a buyer the same day, and bang, that's like, it's like three grand profit. Why didn't you tell me? Well, do you tell me about every cotton blow dry you do? Well, yeah, I would if it was three grand. OK, all right, fine, fine. From now on, you can have the full inventory if that's what you want. What I want, if we're having a baby together, is to be able to trust you. Well, that's down to you, innit? I mean, what else do you want me to do? You could start by telling me what really happened with Ryan. Ryan. You beat him up, didn't you, because he was... Oh, running. come on, babe, not this again. Yes, this again! Gary, what really happened, please? What are you trying to say? I'm, I'm some kind of... Don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what it sounds like. Well, maybe you heard that, eh? What, you've been speaking to Ali again? It doesn't matter who told me. Is it true? Not the way that he tells it, no. Go on. I'm listening. OK, Ryan owed me money, but not because he borrowed it. I helped him out with some work. And he stole 650 quid from me. I should have gone to the police, but I didn't. I said that he could pay me back in instalments. And what happened? Well, he didn't pay me back. He said that he was skint and booked a flaming holiday. So, yeah, I lost my rag and I shouldn't have. But he's playing me for a fool. Ask him if you don't believe me. Ali said that he's seen some book with people's names and um, remittance. Well, well, yeah, yeah, because some people buy furniture on tick, don't they? And I've got to keep a record for tax. Otherwise, I would be a flaming criminal. This. It's jealousy. Come on, is that not flaming obvious? Look, Ali's seen that I'm flush. And he's heard about Ryan's so-called loan and he's, he's jumped to a conclusion that suits him. Because he wants to break his lump. Do you promise you're telling me the truth? I cross my heart. I mean, a loan shark, come on. How can you even believe that? I thought we had something. We do. We do. It's just... All the stuff with the bag, it all just seemed to confirm it. I'm sorry. I'm an ungrateful idiot. Ah, don't worry about it. You've just been played. Killed. Well, everybody's got to die at some point, haven't they? That's one thing that I've learned throughout all of this. Right. And where would that have left Bertie? <sighs> Better off. There's no shortage of people that want to look after him. Yeah, because they care about you. Yeah, and don't I know it? Ah. Uh, I even walk down the street without people patting me on the arm or giving me that look. No. Poor bloke. Do you hear what happened to his wife? I feel like a local charity case. Yeah, well, it all comes from a good place. <sighs> maybe. Or maybe people just love a juicy tragedy. What? what? No, you're not being fair now. Yeah, well, fairness went out of the window a long time ago, didn't it? I'm sorry. I know that it's coming from a good place. But there are other people that they could be wasting their sympathy on. People that actually deserve it. Like who? You had the cruelest possible thing happen to you. No. No. Sinead did. In spades. Not just talking about the cancer. I mean, that took her life away. But 
I took away her spirit. Her self-esteem. A belief that she was loved when she needed it most. And I will never forgive myself for that. Ditched your quiff, I see. Yeah, yeah, didn't have much choice. Mm. So, uh, what have you been up to? Um, I own my own business, actually. Streetcars in Weatherfield. Wow. Never knew you had it in you. Well, you never knew me at all, did you? Spent a few years ducking and diving, mind. How about you? Well, I try to avoid the diving in my life. Still on the planes? Yeah, still pushing that trolley, still tugging the toggle on my life jacket, still humouring beard-up losers, whether it be at 30,000 feet or the occasional shift behind that bar. Have you married any of them? Well, I couldn't, could I? Not with us still being hitched. But you knew we were married? I was at the ceremony. Yeah, but it was a long time ago. I didn't think it'd be binding. Of course it was binding. By the power vested in Sammy Davis Jr., by Clark County, Nevada. Well, why didn't you tell me? I assumed you knew. You, you, you're my you're my next of kin. I'm yours. You you could be responsible for switching off me life support machine or donating me organs, isn't it? Well, I didn't think of it like that. Do you want to donate your organs? No. No, that's not the issue. Why didn't you find me? Well, I suppose it was something I was always going to do. You know, if I got engaged or something, I was always going to come looking for you. But I never met Mr. Wright. Okay, well, listen, we need to draw a line under this, okay? Just tell me one thing. We didn't sleep together, right? No. Well, at least that's summer. He, well, he wouldn't let me sleep. Sting's got nothing on this one. We were at it for hours. If we'd been on a flight, we'd have needed a layover. No. <laughs> well, I don't know, mate. I'd take that. How are you? We were like John and Yoko surviving off Cheetos and pretzels at the minibar. Yeah, you're making it up now. If I was making it up, how would I know about your banana sticker? Banana sticker? He's got a little white birthmark on the inside. All right, all right, all right, all right. I believe you now. How do you just give us a bit of privacy? All right, I'll leave you to it, banana man. <laughs> Notes to the grindstone. I'm just going through management applications. Need a hand? <laughs> I've got it. Thanks. I'm only trying to help. Look, I know we left you in the lurch going to Vegas, and on reflection, I don't blame you for pulling a face about the wedding. It's fine. No, it's not. Yasmin's dead worried about this party. Party? There's some drinks at the house to celebrate our getting spliced. She should be looking forward to it, but she thinks it'll kick off. Why would I? Because it's rubbing your nose in it. Your gran was on cloud nine, but since her running with you, she's not the same woman. Well, you can't blame me for that. I had a right to be surprised. No, sorry, no, I, I wasn't trying to point the finger. She's really upset. Like I've never seen. She just wants you to be happy for her, but I can see that's too much to ask. No. No, look, I'll be there. And I promise I won't cause a scene. I don't know. She'll spend that party. Walking on eggshells, watching your face, desperate to please. That kind of strain's not good for her. We'll cancel. No, don't do that. Not on my account. I'll just... I'll give it a miss. Well, that'll make it worse. Unless... What? You can come up with some plausible excuse so it wouldn't feel like a snob. OK. I'll think of something. really said that? Yeah. Must have watched that video a thousand times. Wow. That's when I thought I couldn't feel any worse. Well, it doesn't get any easier. Trust me. Look, we can't change what happened, but we can try to understand it. I understand. I'm my father's son. No. No, you weren't kissing me. 
No more than you were telling me you loved me before. God, that's an easy one, that, though. Because that day, when I kissed you, I knew it was you. But I could have been anyone. In that moment, you wanted comfort. You were clutching onto something because you knew that everything you ever loved was slipping away. For ages, deep down, there was that stupid, irrational feeling that every day that she was well, there was hope. But then when we got to the point where there was no pretending, I had to look it in the face. And I couldn't. It was unbearable. It's been that way. I know. Sinead was the love of your life. It still is. I just wish that she knew that. I wish she knew that. I wake up every day thinking about her. That I go to bed every night thinking about her. And that she's with me in every moment in between. Maybe she does know. No, no. There's no solace in fantasies about the hereafter. She's gone. Well, then it's up to you, isn't it? You can either find comfort in the way that you feel about Sinead, have always felt about her, or you can torture yourself forevermore over a moment that meant absolutely nothing whatsoever. I'm sorry you got dragged into all of this. I'll survive. You need to focus on forgiving yourself for Bertie's sake. He deserves more than I can give him. I'm letting him down. No, you've done as well as anybody could have expected. And if Sinead was still here, she She's would... not, though, is she? She's not, and she's not going to be. No, she's not. But you are. And whether you like it or not, you have got the opportunity that she never had. The chance to watch the son that she cherished grow up, to love him, to guide him, to be proud of whatever he goes on to do. And she would have given the world for that. She understood a stupid kiss when you were confused and hurting, but she would have never understood this wallowing in self-pity, drunk and falling in front of cars, not when her child needs you. All of you. Not just the little bit that your grief can spare. So we can't just get it annulled? Not after all them pretzels and Cheetos. So was I really like Sting? You were more frantic than tantric, <laughs> as I recall, but you did have staying power. Yeah, well, those were the days before the heart attack. Well, I mean, you look well enough to me. I'm, I'm surprised no one snapped you up. Me? No. God, no. Joking, aren't you? Um. <sighs> Carl, would you say that we hadn't consummated it? Because nobody else was there, was there? No. I don't know what kind of girl you think I am. And I'm, I'm not one of them that stands up in court and lies, neither. I don't want any trouble. All right, OK, fair enough. So I suppose we should just get divorced, then? It's crazy that we've stayed together all these years, isn't it? I don't know. We've lasted longer than most. Maybe we're on to something. No. We should quit whilst we're ahead. Cash in our chips. Yeah. Okay, well, if that's what you want. In the circumstances, I won't be seizing half your assets. I'll just settle for 10K. 10K? Well, that's less than a grand for every year that we've been married. I think that's quite reasonable in but my opinion. That's ridiculous. I haven't got 10K. Where did 10K from? Give over. You'll give yourself another coronary. I'm pulling your leg. You used to have a sense of humour. <sighs> Sorry, it's been a hard week. 
So you're all right if we just get it done then? No hard feelings. But why would there be? Fifteen years and never a crossword. Maybe we were onto something. I'll be in touch then, shall I? Again? I've literally just stopped. That's what they all say. But don't worry, my sweet. The cavalry's here. It's all right. I've finished. Have you? Mm. Ooh, that's not dust. That's topsoil. I could rear a fine crop of onions up there. I've been concentrating on the surfaces. Bacteria's not fussy where it grows. I didn't realize you were expecting such a deep clean. Well, shallow would be a start. Right. I'll make a cuppa, and then I'll carry on. Do you want a drink? Oh, actually, I need to be getting down to the wholesalers. I've got to get some wine and nibbles for the party. Hmm. And there's a whole pile of crap to shell for my legendary pinwheel. I can help you do that. Ah, you'll not have time if you're stopping to suck that tea. Well, I leave it then. You're my little Trojan, that's what you are. <laughs> Keep fighting the good fight. Be back in a jiffy. Oh, yeah, by the way, I saw Alia in the pub. Oh. I invited her to the party, but she didn't want to know. What? Mm. I think I'm going to need my olive branch surgically removed. Perhaps I should talk to her. You'll do nothing of the kind. Not after the way she spoke to me in the pub. If she wants to harbour a grudge, let her. She'll be the loser, not us. Hey. Hey. Thanks for calling. We've been worried sick. Grand has been searching all over. Yeah, I thought you might be. That's why I rang. How long has he been in? Fifteen minutes. He seemed okay. It wasn't really a big impact, but I was worried that he might have hit his head. He was a bit disorientated after. Well? I'll live. Sorry for running out on everyone. Aye, some people do anything to avoid the bill. How are you? You okay, yeah? I will be. God, put everybody through so much already. Hey, thought you said you weren't going to be so hard on yourself. I'm not. No more hiding. No more getting wasted. I've been given a chance that Sinead didn't have to bring up our son. And I'm not going to throw that away. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Not mine, though. Thank you for everything today. What are friends for? I better get back to the bistro before they hire somebody else. Oh, I can go over and explain no, everything. No, no, it's fine. And I'm just glad you're all right. Me too. Anyway, um, see you around. Yeah. to chat. No, I know what I said before was a lot to take in. Oh, I was taken in, all right. Can you not bear to see me happy? Are you joking me? Gary is a criminal. I'm trying to protect you and Liam. No, here. you're not. You're trying to split me and Gary up because you can't have me for yourself. No. And Ryan didn't borrow money from Gary. He stole it. And when Gary gave him the chance to pay him back, Ryan took the mick. Gary is a lone shark. OK, I've seen it with my own eyes, Maria. You're just seeing whatever you want to see. No, no, you know what? That's exactly what you're doing, OK? You can't bear the thought that the father of your kid is a thug, so you'd sooner rather live in denial. Well, you want to wake up soon, Maria, before it's too late to get rid of his baby. Are you really that desperate that you'd actually lie to me to try and make me have an abortion? I'm not lying, OK? And I didn't mean to say you that. You know what, Ali? I couldn't believe my luck when me and you first started going out. You seemed so kind and so lovely. I was so wrong. This isn't about me. Yes, it is. You're a good-looking doctor with the world at your feet, used to getting everything you want. 
Well, not this time, and that's what you can't stand. No. Yeah. Backstreet hairdresser like me, I should be grateful that you'd even look at me twice. How dare I choose Gary over someone like you? Well, you know what? Gary is ten times the man you'll ever be. He's my future. So I am going to have his baby, and we're going to be happy. I don't want to wait from you again. You are making a massive mistake here. I need to go and get Liam from his friends. The car's outside. Sit yourself down. I do. Because we both know I should call the GMC. Tell them how you like to relax. Hmm? But that'd be quite ungrateful of me, wouldn't it? After all you've done for me with Maria, so I'm gonna keep that one in the back pocket. For now. What are you doing here? <sighs> Good question. I mean, I paid this month's rent, so why I'm the one packing a bag, God only knows. Hey, maybe I'll stay. No, you won't. No, you don't get to push me around anymore, all right? I'm telling you now, if you lay one finger on either of us... Yeah, yeah OK. That. Where has that come from? I just hope Vicky's OK. Why do you keep banging on about her? Because you were the last person to see her alive, Robert. And? No, OK, this interests me. What exactly do you think I'm capable of? I have absolutely no idea anymore. And I don't plan on finding out. And if you don't leave right now, I'm going to call the police. And I mean it. What are you... Don't push it, Robert. Are you in enough trouble as it is? One. Two. OK, OK. Fine. I'm going. But when Vicky turns up, which she will, you're going to be the one going out that door. Excuse me. I'll never eat a banana again. Leave off, will you, mate? Can't you see that I'm embarrassed? Oh, I wouldn't be. Depends on the banana. There's all sorts of variations. You stop banging on about bananas. All right, sorry, Timbo. She can call me what she wants now that she's agreed to the divorce. I've done the hard bit. Oh, you reckon? So, how are you going to marry Sally without a twigging? Uh, that's what banana skin, that. Uh, I don't know. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. You're already there. You're halfway across, and now the trolls are coming after you. Calling my wife a troll? You know what I'm saying. How are you going to get Sally down the aisle? Seriously. I don't know. I'll think of something. I don't think you will. I reckon honesty is the best policy. You're going to have to tell Sally. Come on, have a little bit of it. Yeah, there we go. It's good for you. What is it? Mango, sweet potato, and peach. Mm. Ew. Don't blame me for yakking it back up. Let's have a break. Because <sighs> we need to have a talk. See, the thing is, Daddy's been a bit of a. Well, I won't say. I don't want your first word to be a naughty one. Put it this way. I've not been very cheerful. And yet, you make me so very, very happy. Yeah. And you deserve to see more smiles. Like that one. Who's that? <laughs> Despite all of the doom and gloom and misery out there, there are some amazing things in this world and some amazing people in it. Your mummy knew that because she was one of them. And even though I miss her every moment of every day, I should give thanks for the time that we had with her. Even though it was short, some people will never know the happiness that we had. Or how it feels to be loved the way that she loved you. So, here's the deal. 
I'm going to do better, okay, by growing up a bit, taking responsibility, doing my grieving in my own time. And you, you are going to do it by eating your mango, sweet potato and peach. OK? How's that sound? We got a deal. Good. Right. <laughs> bon appétit. Come on. Next on ITV, the search continues to find the next superstar group, and tonight it's the girls' turn to perform as they try to secure their place. The X Factor, the band, continues in a moment.